so now we're going to go into a topic called measure branching now this isn't something that you'll see or read about that often because it is something unique to enterprise dna it's a methodology that i've sort of dreamt up over time around how best to think about creating measures and what it really sort of stands for is you can create measures out of measures okay and so what do i mean by that i want to do a bit of a setup here so that you can get a really good idea of what what i what i mean and how i'm going to do it is i'm going to create um i, I want to create a calculation on sort of profits i want to understand what my profits are now if you look at our table of raw data here we can't really do that here right because of the data not being in our fact table it's not sitting within our um, table so we can sort of just count it up in this one table but what we can do is we can utilize information which is sitting in another table so you see here that we do have the cost information right we do have cost and so what we could do is we can calculate up what our uh, cost is per row in that sales table and then go revenues minus costs and then we're going to get our profits and the great thing is we can do this all within measures okay so let's just do that i'm going to quickly go through a few things um, as we go so i'm going to first of all create a new measure called total costs okay and i'm going to go down to another new line a new line here and i'm going to go um sum x same as what we used before because we need an iterating function to be able to do this i'm going to go sales table here i'm going to go quantity so i'm still going to reference the quantity column here okay and then i'm going to multiply it by the cost now the cost column does not exist in our sales table so we have to do something a bit tricky and what we're going to do is we're going to use a function called related okay and what it does is it returns a related value from another table. So this is a really interesting function, which is not used that often, to be honest, but this is a perfect example of where you would use it because we need to retrieve a value from another table. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and find that product cost column from the products table, and then I'm gonna go and close off the brackets and go enter. And so what's gonna happen now as we go through every single row in the sales table, what it's going to do is it's going to reach back up here through this relationship. It's going to reach back up and grab the associated cost for each individual product at every single row. Okay. And so when I drag this into this particular table, you'll see now that we have a cost um, for every. So what, what was the total sales we made per customer? And now we have the total costs per customer. Okay. Now, once we've done that, I'm going to delete all of these intermediary um, calculations. We don't need those anymore. One thing we could do that I just, um, I've just realized, we can format here, right? So what I could potentially do is I could come up to um, go, click on the measure and then go to my measure tools and then I can format as a, let's just do like as a dollar sign, as dollars. So very, very easy to do, right? Simple formatting. Okay. Now here's where measure branching comes in, right? We've got two measures. We've got our sales measure and we've got our, our costs measure, okay? I'm gonna create another measure here and I'm gonna call it total profits, okay? And check out what formulas I put in here. I'm gonna start typing in uh, total sales and I don't even have to type in the entire um, measure name and you'll see here in the IntelliSense that I can select a particular um, measure, okay? And I'm gonna select total sales here, like that. Then I'm gonna go and find total cost. I'm gonna start typing it in, and then all I've gotta do is find the measure and go tab. And then I have a new measure, a new measure which is being created out of measures. And this is the start of what we call measure branching, okay? And I can now put that into my table and I can turn that into dollars as well. And so now we're seeing what the total profits are per customer. And the great thing is here, right, is that we don't even need these intermediary calcs. The measure branching is going to work in behind the scenes and say I want to use this in a visualization. I can very easily do so um, by inputting that measure, that new measure that we have created 
inside a visualization and then I can filter it any way I like. So I'm filtering it by customers here, but if I wanted to, I could maybe filter it by um, county. I could bring that in, sub that out, and now I've got my profits per county, okay? We can go even further though. I can go again, I can say, I wanna create a new measure. Uh, I just realized I put it in the wrong table, so I'm gonna just, just exit, escape out of it. I wanna click into this table or anything in this table, and then I wanna go new measure, and then I wanna go profit margin, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a function called divide, which is just a better way to um, create um, division, okay? And a right division inside of Power BI. And I'm gonna to go total profits, I'm gonna find that total profits measure, and then I'm gonna divide it by total sales. And then I'm gonna put an alternative result as of zero. Okay, and then I'm gonna drag this in here. I'm gonna turn it to a percentage. And so now, and think about that, we're now brown, so this total profits measure was created by our measures. Then we're reusing it again, we're branching out again to create the profit margin calculation. And then now we have profit margins and then we could turn this into a visualization as well. Okay, then I could go like so and create a very simple visualization um, which just showcases profit margins, right? And there's a, um, they're all a lot, a lot, more, a lot similar there. So maybe a, a different visualization would be in order for something like that. But hopefully you're getting the idea here of what measure branching is. It's reusing measures within measures. And it goes back to that sort of first point around when, when we just started this, uh, this DAX calculation section is, um, you know, you st you're starting off really simple, right? But then all of a sudden, we can start getting into more advanced calculations. I mean, this isn't even advanced, really, but we can start branching out into things that are um, more more advanced. And you'll see that I've still not created any additional data within my tables here. I've not created any calculated columns at all. You just do not need them. You can create all of the calculations you need and more effectively within measures, okay? And that's exactly what, what I am doing here. So you can branch even further, right? You can branch even further, and we might go through a few more examples in the, in the next video. This is just some really initial stuff. You know, when you can take things to the next level is when you say, okay, I want to uh, utilize, I want to create a cumulative total. I want to, I want to create, see what my cumulative revenue is. I want to see what my cumulative profits are. Or you could do some sort of time comparison. I want to compare my profits this year versus my profits last year um, or last month or last quarter. I want, a I want a quarter to date calculation. So this is where you can reuse any of these measures here over and over again in all of these um, uh, these sort of formula combinations um, of, of, of DAX. So you're know, branching out again into these um, sort of patterns if you like is another way to think of it. Sort of DAX patterns that you could use. Okay, so let's let's round off this one. Hopefully you've got the idea now um, and you're really buying into this um, measure branching methodology because I definitely want you to to sort of embed this in your mind so you can start using it straight away when, when writing, writing DAX formulas. Okay, let's move on to the next video of this section.